So a car is starting off 2025 with quite a few new devices, including another new smart light switch. This is the Acara H2 switch, but with a couple of key differences. And I think one of them is going to be a trend for new Acara devices. Firstly, it's got four buttons instead of the typical two or three that you tend to find on Acara switches. The top two are as you would expect, they can control lights directly. And then the bottom two can be used for whatever you like. Another new product is this T2 light bulb. And so the bottom two buttons on the light switch would be perfect for changing things like the brightness or the color temperature. This is the RGB variant as well, which would be great for setting the mood or my personal favorite is using it as a status light. And this is what I'm going to be doing here. This is outside my studio room and I'm going to be using this so that I don't get disturbed. Considering we're just talking about a smart switch and a bulb, there's a surprising amount of features to talk through. So let's dive in. So the new trend I'm talking about is that these two new devices can do matter or thread in the same device. But notice that I said or, so we'll come back to that in a minute. If you want to use this switch with a smart light bulb, or in fact any smart switch, then you're going to need to make sure that you keep power to the light bulb, otherwise you're not going to be able to control it. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. You could just create an automation in the Acara app so that when you press a button, it changes the settings of the bulb. Or Acara's got this strange feature called Mars Tech, whereby you basically select the button and select the device you want to control, and then it will do it for you. You. you just need to note that for this to work, then these two devices do need to be on the same Acara hub. So for example, you couldn't have this on a M3 hub and this on an M2 hub. They'd both have to be using the same hub. There are some other features in the Acara app that I want to talk about, but first let's address the Zigbee thread thing that I talked about earlier. So basically, they can support thread or Zigbee, but you actually have to choose between the two, so you can't have them working both at the same time. And even more so, you actually have to change the firmware on the devices. So when you set up the device in the Acara app and go through the pairing process, then it will basically ask you, do you want to use thread or do you want to use Zigbee? By default, mine were installed with thread, so I gave that a go first, and then I tried it with Zigbee as well. Regardless of whether you connect it using Zigbee or Thread, then you're going to need an Acara hub. This is the Acara M2 hub, and this supports Zigbee but doesn't support Thread. So if you want to use Thread, then you're going to need their M3 hub instead. Having said that, I have found actually at the moment there tends to be more features in the Zigbee version for some of the devices. Also, you could use something like this, which is an SM light dongle, and this can be flashed with either Zigbee or Thread, and likewise with something like this Sonoff dongle. Once you've connected your devices to an Acara hub, then you can also share it with other ecosystems via Matter. I've tried it with Home Assistant and it does work, but not all of the functionality works quite yet. For example, with this smart switch, it does allow you to control the relays and the button presses, but the long press and the double press doesn't work at the moment, but I'm sure they'll sort that out soon. I also tried connecting this directly to Home Assistant with Zigbee to MQTT using a dongle like this, and it did work, but it did say it was unsupported. And there were some features that worked and some that didn't. For example, the relays could be controlled, but you couldn't actually have the button presses for the two bottom buttons yet. But I'm sure once this has been out for a couple of weeks, then someone in the community will get it supported quickly. There are a couple of features available in this light switch that have been available in previous generations as well, but I still think they're worth talking about. One of them is power monitoring, so that if you want to monitor the usage of your lights that are connected to this switch, then you can do that. Also, another one is, is that you've got the little indicator lights of when the light is on or not, and you can reverse this option. So basically, say if you've got it in a bedroom, then you probably want these indicators to be on when the light is on and off when the light is off so that it doesn't keep you awake at night. But if it's in say an entrance way that's dark, then it might be good to have the indicators on when the light is off so that you can see where the switch is and vice versa when the light is on. If you live in the UK, then there's one piece of good news and one piece of bad news about this light switch. The good news is, is that it does support a no neutral setup. So you don't need a neutral wire in your light switch to power this device. 
But the bad news is, is that it's quite thick at the back. You need about 30 millimeters clearance. And some back boxes in the UK are only 25 millimeters. So this might be a bit of a challenge and you're probably not going to get it in. If your back box is recessed into the wall a bit, which does sometimes happen, then you might be okay. And I have managed to get this into a couple of different back boxes in my house fine. I'd be really interested to hear in the comments whether you have a challenge with getting these sort of smart light switches into your back boxes and how many of you have neutral wires in your back boxes or don't. With me I've got a mixture throughout the house but most of them don't have it so it can be a bit inconvenient. One other thing to consider is that if you have a no neutral setup then smart bulbs are unfortunately a no-no. So if you're going for a no neutral setup then you're going to have to have normal light bulbs but if you've got a neutral then you can use smart light bulbs. A few of the useful features of the switch are that it's got two-way control, power memory and relay lock. So two-way control allows you to use the buttons as wireless switches connected to another light switch which turns on a light. This means that it then actually synchronizes the status lights between the two switches which is quite nice. Power memory means that if power is lost to the light switch, then when the power comes back on again, then it resumes the previous state. So if the light was on, then it comes back on again, and if it was off, it stays off. And finally, the relay lock option is a way of preventing you from accidentally cutting power to a light that's connected to the switch. This is particularly useful if you're using a smart bulb, as I mentioned earlier, because you want to keep power to the smart bulb. Then it means that if you're using something like an Amazon Echo device, you can't accidentally cut power to the light bulb rather than turning it on and off. The T2 light bulb also has the power memory feature and this feature is available in Home Assistant via Matter Over Thread or the Matter Bridge with Zigbee but the options are slightly different between the two. The bulb itself has various options for changing the colour temperature or if you've got the RGB version then changing the colour itself as well. It's also got a lot of settings that are similar to the T1M ceiling light whereby you can choose from some effects that are pre-built or you can build your own effects and it's got quite rich functionality when you're building your own effects. You can select sequences of colours, you can change the speed, the brightness and you can choose from four different types of effects. Unfortunately, these effects aren't available via Matter just yet, so you're going to have to use the Acara app with the Acara hub or use the Acara automations to be able to use the effects. So to sum up these two products, I would say that neither of them have groundbreaking new technology, but they're both very solid devices. And if you're already in the Acara ecosystem, then I think it's worth getting them and having an Acara hub. But the good thing is they don't force you into the Acara ecosystem. You can connect it via Thread or Zigbee to other ecosystems directly if you want to. And I'm also starting to warm to the matter standard a little bit. Once you know how it works, then you can easily connect it to different ecosystems. Well, that's it for today. So if you're considering buying these devices, then please consider using my affiliate links in the description. So thanks, until next time.